Well, that's the one, but we're all out. Ah, don't you just hate it when that happens? LKQ special. So, putting together the cylinder head, half the uh, cam caps were loose and whatever, but I get it all put together. I'm getting ready to tighten everything down, torque it to spec, and I got two that are no-goes. So now I run into a situation where I need to get a helicoil. As you can see, we've used them all, so I have to wait for new ones to come in. Now I'm getting ready to show you how to use a helicoil and what all tools are required before you go and helicoil the crap out of it. That being said, let's dive on into the video and just see how it's done and what tools you're gonna need. Roll camera. All right, today, children, we are learning about helicoils. We're gonna need a drill. And because we're going for the six by one, we need a quarter inch drill bit. We'll need a helicoil kit. Comes with this little fancy apparatus. So we'll end up taking the coil itself and putting it on here. You're gonna want some red Loctite. Make sure it stays down in the chamber when we're all done. And we're gonna thread the coil onto the apparatus like so. I'll show you how to punch that out later. And we got our tap that we're gonna need for this which they provide to you in the kit. So let's rock and roll. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to put a rag down to prevent any kind of material or debris falling into the head. Unfortunately, this is what we're doing it on. I'm gonna go ahead and start the drilling process. All right, I know you guys can't see too well, but this is the hole. You wanna get as straight of a shot as you possibly can now. And just gonna start it off slow. Eyeballs. All right, now we're gonna take a little dab of this red shit and put a little bit on that coil and run our tap in while that sets up. All right, so now we're just gonna tap the hole, run that down as far as you need to. Again, keeping it as nice and straight as possible. All right, now we got the tap in, so we're gonna go ahead and run the coil like so. And then we'll put our fancy little apparatus on here and get it all twisted nice and good. You find me a little crescent wrench. Usually the way I run these little guys in. So, I don't want to run it all the way deep, deep because the other one wasn't all the way in. Of course, if we run into an issue, we can always add another helicoil. How deep your bolt goes. Right, we can either add another helicoil or we can uh, get a different bolt. Maybe put a washer on the other end. Probably not in this case since it is a cam cap though. So hopefully we got the depth right. All right, so then you get your little punch and an appropriate size hammer. I'm just kidding, we're not gonna use Thor for this one. Just gonna use a little tip tap hammer. I'm gonna go down there and just like that. Like so. Breaking the tab off. Yep. Breaking the tang, baby. Breaking the tang. All right, now we're just gonna let that set up a little bit better. And then we'll hit it with a shot of uh, brake clean just to make sure the red lock that doesn't stick to the bolt. We're gonna verify that we can torque this to the seven foot pounds. And if we, if we can and everything went well, then we'll go ahead and do it one more time. 
Borderline retarded, I know. But if they would have just got it right when they remanufactured the head, I wouldn't be running into this problem. Let me show you some of the other Tom fuckery that they have going on here. No offense, Tom. No offense. No fun. <laughs> all right, so here's the rest of the tomfoolery. Ah, 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 ah. You see, this is all oblong. Come over here. They smashed the hell out of this one. I mean, just not a good reman head. Look at this. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So it's no surprise that we had two that were completely stripped out. Half the caps were loose as it was when it came in. I mean, all these are loose, but that's for a reason. You're gonna have to adjust these. I'm gonna show you a tool down here in the corner. It's a 10 millimeter with a flat head, but these are 12 millimeter with a flat head. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that specific tool, but what you can use is something like these Craftsman offset ones, like this 12. And then as you're adjusting the lash, you put this on here like so. And with the uh, feeler gauge tucking up underneath, and then it gives you your valve lash up here, there. So if you guys are interested in that, maybe I wanna get a chance to do the valve lashing. I'll show you how that works. All right, so before we get too excited, we definitely wanna check now if this thing got a chance to set in and see if we can torque it to that seven foot pounds. All right, here we go. Let's just hope for the best. Three, four, five, six, and seven, baby. Perfect. So now we'll just do one more. I'll wrap it up. All right, ladies and germs, boys and ghouls, children of almost all ages. Before we head back to the house, I'm going to show you a couple of really handy uh, re-threaders and taps that you might want to have on hand should shit happen, right? Should shit get real, real, real quick. We're going to take a look at a couple of these things, and I'm going to show you real briefly my tap and die kit if you haven't already seen it, as well as a re-thread kit that I actually is my go-to unless I really need a tap. But I'm going to show you both. First, let me show you these things. I haven't used either one of these yet, but the shop has. So I made sure that I had a couple just in case. But I got one here for re-threading spark plug holes. I got one here for re-threading oxygen sensor holes because sometimes those get boogered and jacked up, especially if the O2 sensor is all rusted in place. Here's one here that they use for re-threading the oil pans on. It's a 14 by 1.5. Uh, they have a helical kit for that too. In fact, Matco sells an oil drain plug re-thread kind of kit. There's also a special kit out there for the Ford Triton. I was at 5.4 uh, for the spark plug holes in case that, that can be fun, right? But a lot of guys get really good at using those things after a little while. I'll try to see if I can't find Amazon affiliate links to this stuff and throw it down below for you. This is a rebranded Irwin kit that I bought from Matco, but check it out. All right, Matco Tools, 75 piece, Stowe, Ohio. Right, here's the sizes. Four through half, three mil, all up to 12 by 1.75. Here's the actual kit itself. What I like about this kit are these adapters specifically. I love having these adapters that fit onto your 3 8 uh, ratchet or even up to your, yeah, these are both for 3 8 ratchet. My bad, I thought one was for half inch. So both these are for 3 8 but these are gonna cover the bigger uh, taps and then this one's gonna cover the smaller taps like these little itty bitty guys. We also have the die mechanism thing itself, this big old winged beast. Here's all your dies. So that's a pretty nice kit. Again, rebranded Irwin. Let me show you the re-thread kit that I have that's also, I believe, rebranded Irwin. Snap-on sells it. Um, well, who else sells it? I think Lyle or Liesel also sells it. But it's a 51-piece re-thread kit. And like I said, I think either Lyle or Irwin sells this kit. But it's also a nice kit to have in case shit happens, right? So just tossing those out there for you guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the fuck out of here. It's goddamn beer 30. The shit's actually getting kind of hot, believe it or not, the quick six. It's in the quick six freezer getting hot right now because my ass is taking too long to get out of here. So I'll see you guys back at the garage. All right, so it's unfortunate that things like this happen, but that's what makes us mechanics, right? Sometimes you just gotta adapt and overcome. There are other times that it's gonna fall way beyond your skill set. You might need an extra hand or you might want someone else to do it so you don't screw something up. Completely understandable. Look, this stuff ain't easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it, right? That's, that's what I've been hearing. 
So, for those of you that get caught up in this, you get a reman cylinder head, you run into it, maybe you need to do a helical, don't worry about it. And maybe you run into an exhaust manifold issue on some Chrysler and the stud broke off inside and you extract it, but now you got to helicoil it. Again, same process, different area of the engine, right? So most of you should be able to get a warm and fuzzy on how you helicoil, not just aluminum heads, could be cast iron heads too, okay? It's the same process, different metal. That's all I got for this video, guys. Thanks as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's content. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. And all Amazon affiliate links will be down below in case you're looking for any of these tools that I use today. That's all I got for this video. See you guys next time. This is.